Come in. Come on. Hey, how are you? Hope everything's going well. It is a Wednesday night. Wednesday night. It is June 10th. And it's about 9.41 p.m. Or as my friend says, well, here we are. Here we are. We're in mascot. It's June 10th, 9.41 p.m. <laughs> it's funny. Before you make a video, you got to state all that. All right. This will be a video, a three minute devotional video, probably go six minutes, read the devotion, sometimes give some other insight that I am uh, that I know about or have experience with. Uh, but three minute devotion, the title is God Wants to Forgive You. It's a pretty good title. Let's see what it's all about. I do not read these first. I just go with it, read it, and uh, meditate on it. Meditate on the Word of God and uh, should be good. Forgiveness, it's a... Uh, when you hear anything about forgiveness, it's one of the things that keeps a lot of people prisoner is because of a lot of unforgiveness from uh, past relationships or with co-workers or intimate relationships, marriages, boyfriends, girlfriends, moms and dads or uh, teachers, coaches, coaches, even. So yeah, be careful with that and unforgiveness. All right, so uh, you got to forgive your brother and sister and your moms and dads, at least your brother and sister in Christ, but... Even if they're not in Christ, you just, uh, let's say that's what Jesus would do. What would Jesus do, right? Take it old school. Hmm, let me think about that. If you have a good relationship with him and with Father God, then you know exactly what to do. It would be a, how do we say, a no-brainer. I love no-brainers because it's so simple because it's right in the Bible. All right, and you can Google search that stuff all day and it'll say what you exactly need to do. So God asks you to do those things and you got to be obedient and do it. So go forgive them. Right? And go love your neighbor, right? And go feed your enemy, right? And all those things, all those things that we're supposed to do and work hard to the glory of God and stuff like that. And <laughs> Cool. Let's see. God wants to forgive you. Who is a God like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgressions? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. We have that same opportunity to show grace and mercy too. So that's cool. We gotta be more Christ-like, so do what Christ did. You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. Micah seven eighteen. What do you imagine about God after you've sinned? Do you imagine an angry God quick to turn you away? Do you imagine him as indignant that you've failed again? Whether you're struggling with habitual sin, or you worry that the past transgressions are beyond God's forgiveness. He's more merciful than you can imagine. Micah compares the Lord to the false gods of his day and assures you that God is completely unlike them. Yes, sin is serious and can alienate you from God, but if you confess your sins, he is quick to forgive and restore you. Do you imagine God towering over you to strike you with judgment? Don't. The Bible assures you that his anger passes quickly and that he delights in mercy. God takes no pleasure in judgment. If you want to delight him, stop hiding your sins and failures. Bring them out before him in plain sight and forsake them so he can show mercy to you. All right? So that's one of the first things that we do is we ask for forgiveness. We repent and ask for forgiveness and ask for Jesus Christ to come into our heart and be the uh, the Lord of our life, that we're going to follow you and whatever you say and we'll be obedient to you to the end. Ah, it's cool. Very cool. That's what, that's what you do. You need to get baptized and tell everybody else, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and they'll hold you to it, but they'll forgive you. All of us will still show grace and mercy because we more become more Christ-like and righteous and holy because that's what he did. That's what we did because he, he loved, we loved. Because he first loved, we love, all right? Because he came to serve, we serve, right? All those things. So we got to get really good at showing grace and mercy. And, of course, faith and love and obedience and all that stuff. Uh, but we need it every day. His graces and mercies are new every day, biblical, right? So, uh, yeah, so it's cool. So be able to show other people that, too. Uh, and patience. Don't forget about patience. I always, I always try to say a reminder of what to pray for at the end if you don't know. But, uh... Yeah, pray for all those things. God, I messed up again. Sinned again just when I thought I was doing better. 
I ask you to forgive me and draw me close to you again. As simple as that. So at the end of the night, wherever, throughout the day, if you do something bad or if you need to talk to Father God, just get in your quiet place, your secluded, your private place, get in your war room, get in your closet, get on your knees, just talk to your Heavenly Father. All right, I'm sure you'll get a response, and I'm sure a heavy, heavy weight will be lifted off your shoulder when you just give it away. You have to actually give it away. You have to leave it at the cross. It's got to be gone. All right, whatever you did, hopefully that person, whoever you did it to, or if you did it in secret, hopefully the person forgave you, or make sure to tell them so it's not on your heart anymore, uh, especially for us that are saved Oh, man, the Holy Spirit will prompt us so much to be like, dang, you need to say something. You need to take care of this. So take care of it quickly so it doesn't uh, simmer in there and cause that, that pressure, that uneasiness, all right? So unforgiveness and hating and all that stuff or being even around exposed to negative stuff and watching negative stuff. Uh, that's why we had to be the church and we have to show all these characteristics um, there's no been nobody ever in life you can ask anybody that that has done it better than Jesus he was a hundred percent man hundred percent God and uh, he was sinless he, he was perfect he lived the perfect life and he was the example uh, better than example he was the sacrifice for our sins all right because he, he was the debt he paid our debt and uh, we're free and clear now and uh, he says not to go on sinning. Um, don't be of the flesh. When you get the Holy Spirit baptized with the Holy Spirit and you're in Christ and you follow His Word and what He says and you're in relationship with Him, uh, chances are you're not going to sin again. I mean, Paul says he does, but uh, I don't know why he wrote that. <laughs> That's Paul. It's in the Bible, right? Cool. Be in Christ. Get in close relationship. It's hard. He was on a really hard journey, the things he had to go to. So I could imagine where his mind told him and how the devil attacked him even more because he was getting, he was saving people's lives. The more people you save, that's the less people in hell for, for the devil, right? So, yeah, when you're doing big things, that's when, uh, when the enemy comes at you the most. But uh, an enemy might tell you to hold a grudge and hate this person or unforgive this person or that person did this and that person did that. The the worst person are the people that we need to forgive and, and pray for and witness to and love on. There's a lot of missed opportunities. So when you got somebody that is drunk, on drugs, in and out of jail, uh, still committing crimes, those are the people the family needs to run after. I mean, not after the fact, before fact. We need to be proactive. If we see something, say something. All right, like, hey, bro, you need to talk or anything? Or everything going all right? Most of the time they'll say okay, but uh, you'll be like, are you sure? <laughs> you need anything? Of course, we're all kind of uh, broken at one point or struggling with something. But most of the time, sometimes people that are in Christ uh, really are, might be okay because you know God's going to give us a victory again. But definitely easier to talk to somebody about it. All right, so cool. Those are the people we got to save. A lot of times it's Jesus in disguise. Uh, cool. I don't know where I'm going with that, but we'll stop it there. Remember to do your own devotionals or like and share this type of stuff um, with your friends on social media or through text message or whatever way on your Instagram. Super important to get our focus right. And I guarantee you if your focus is correct and forget about what's going on in the world and just focus on God, just like when Peter was in the boat, Jesus was on the water during the storm, and he kind of asked Peter to come on the water, and Peter did walk on the water. But you know what? When he took his eyes off Jesus, that's when he went under. Don't. All right? Don't do it. All right? Stay focused. All right? Don't get into all the other stuff. Just God. God, God, God. So, uh, yeah. Love you guys. Stay in the Word of God. Make sure to pray. Pray for friends, families. <laughs> friends, families, and co-workers. And those, all those people will be the ones that are in positions of authority or they'll be emergency responders or healthcare workers because they're all friends, families, or co-workers unless you have no friends or family and you don't work, right? 
But uh, even them, they could be in the Word of God and they could still be saved and in Christ and be and have a peace and a joy, which is really cool. Really, really cool. The awesome, most awesome free gift. All right. Love you guys. See ya. Bye.